Hello friends, this video on body fluids and circulation part 21 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about a new topic that is ECG. Now even though it is a diff I am teaching it as a different topic but this is also related to the functioning of the heart. So and that is why we are studying here. This is you can say that this is a kind of application or it is a procedure which can actually test the electrical activity of the heart whether the heart is functioning properly or not so it can test that so what is ECG? ECG stands for electrocardiography so cardio means heart electro why electro because it tests the electrical activity of the heart whether the heart is uh, creating the, the whether the nodal tissues in the heart are creating the impulses at the right time in the proper way or not and why graphy because it produces graph so that is why the name electrocardiography so what happens in electrocardiography it is a technique to measure the electrical activity of the heart now when i say electrical activity i am concentrating only on the functioning of the nodal tissues that is the that activity of the heart which involves production or initiation of electrical impulses and then conduction of electrical impulses to the rest of the portion of the heart so this technique will measure that part or that activity of the heart now the, it tests the electrical and muscular functions of the heart the machine is known as electrocardiograph and the graphical representation which is obtained is known as the electrocardiogram that is the report which you obtain where you will see some graphs something like this here you can see some graphs so these kind of structures you will see so that is known as electrocardiogram and the machine which is used to uh, do all these things that is called electrocardiograph so let us look at the procedure to perform an ECG. How do we take up this, uh, how do we do this uh, test or ECG in order to know the electrical activity of the heart? Now there are two types of ECG which can be obtained. One is a standard ECG and the other one is a detailed ECG. So standard ECG is something which will just give you an overall idea about whether uh, the electrical activity of the heart is proper or not. Whereas, whereas a detailed ECG will give you much more details about each and every minute thing taking place inside the heart. But here we are going to talk about only the standard ECG. So how do we take a standard ECG? Well, what we do is before we get to know that let us see what is the principle behind this ECG now what happens is it detects and amplifies the tiny electrical charges on skin that are caused due to activity of heart during each heartbeat now as I said now each with each cardiac cycle there are a lot of electrical impulses running inside our body because even though it is happening inside the heart but actually the blood is flowing out of the heart to different parts of the body so there are certain electrical charges that are present inside our body so those electrical char charges are extremely small those tiny charges are being identified from our skin and then they are amplified to understand the activity of the heart during each heartbeat or during each cardiac cycle. So what is the procedure? The patient is connected to the ECG machine or there is a monitor kind of a thing which actually comes out with the um, ECG on a paper. So the patient is connected to that machine by three electrical leads. So what are leads? What do I mean by leads? Basically, there are electrodes which are placed on three places on the body. That is one on each arm and one on the left leg. And these three are then connected by wires to the machine. So the electrodes are attached to the skin surface on each arm and the left ankle. That is, you have it here, you have it here and you have it on the left ankle so these are the three places where you keep the electrodes and then attach them through these leads and connect them to the machine but here in this case you actually see that the person has even more attachments there are more leads almost some 10 leads are there so many are there on the chest as well this is for a detailed ecg 
but for a standard ECG only having it on the two arms and the left ankle is enough and then you can actually see you can view the activity of the heart on that machine so how that how does the graph look like and how can you interpret looking at that graph so you would see a graph something like this you would have often seen in movies or something that a patient is lying down and you see something like this running on the monitor so what is that that what you see on the screen denotes the activity of the heart so now let us see what does it interpret just looking at these waves what can you see about the activity of the heart now each peak corresponds to a specific electrical activity of the heart. For example, here you have this is one peak, this is another peak, this is yet another peak. And after that the same peaks get repeated if the heart is functioning properly. Now let us try to understand the significance of P, QRS and T peak. First let us talk about the P wave. So what P wave? QRS complex and T wave. These are the three important parts of the uh, ECG output. So what does the P wave indicate? It indicates the excitation and contraction of the auricles. That means when the auricles contract, that is the first step, right? Once the electrical impulses are being generated, the first thing that happens is the contraction of the auricles. So that is denoted by the P wave. Next is the QRS complex which shows the excitation and contraction of the ventricles. After the auricles have contracted, after some time, the electrical impulses reach the ventricles via the bundle of hills and then the ventricles contract. So the contraction of the ventricles is denoted by the QRS complex. Now when the ventricles contract, that time there is a high ventricular pressure also involved and with this pressure, the blood flows out of the ventricles. So this is denoted by the QRS complex. And what about the T wave? It denotes the relaxation of the ventricles. Relaxation of ventricles is basically the end of the cardiac cycle in one way. After that again the same steps will keep on repeating. So P, QRS and T they denote the contraction of auricles, contraction of ventricles and then the relaxation of the ventricles. So by looking at this, by looking at the ECG of a person, you can also see if the heart is beating the correct number of times because every time the heart beats, there will be one QRS complex because QRS complex is the more prominent one. So it will be easier to observe, okay, how many QRS complexes are there. So the number of QRS complex is equal to the heart beat rate. So you can say that the number of QRS complex is equal to the heartbeat rate. Now any deviation from this shape for like, suppose you do an ECG for any patient and if the shape is more or less like this that means his heart is functioning properly but if there is any deviation from this shape that means there is either some disease or some abnormalities with the functioning of the heart. Now, if you talk about the abnormal ECGs, they can be like anything. For example, in case of a stroke, the ECG can be like this. That means the heart is not functioning properly. So, there can be deviations to any extent depending upon the disease or the abnormalities involved. But under normal cases, the wave should always go like this. So, something of this sort. So if you see here, the P wave and T wave are not that prominent, but QRS is quite prominent. So looking at the QRS, you can actually get a better idea about uh, the electrical activity of the heart. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.